In Kafka or Kubernetes, if one machine fails, another steps in. No downtime, no data loss. What's the magic behind this smooth coordination? The answer is distributed consensus. Today, we're taking a look at the Raft protocol and how it's used by these systems to stay in sync. This animation represents Raft in action. A lot of things are going on here. We see messages being sent from this S1 nodes to the others, the others responding to S1. We see the state on the right. So a lot to make sense of. But wait, why do we need multiple machines? Why can't we just use a single one? And even if we had multiple machines, why can't each machine do its thing without having to worry about the others? Why do they need to share state? So why multiple machines? The first reason is scalability. Even though modern hardware is truly impressive, you can get hundreds of gigs of RAM and terabytes and terabytes of disk space, but you can only scale so much vertically. At some point, your load is going to be so big that a single machine is unable to handle it. That's when you need to split the load across multiple machines or scale horizontally. In the highway, does your lane seem to be suspiciously always slower does the light turn red right before you get to the intersection well that's murphy's law if something can go wrong it probably will and the same applies to computing if a piece of hardware can fail it probably will so in that scenario it's best to have a backup that's ready to take over the moment failure occurs and that's why we use multiple machines multiple availability zones multiple regions because at some point the hardware is going to fail and we need to have backup to keep going. The third point is performance. This is slightly related to the first point that is scalability, but somewhat different. If your machine starts to reach its limit, you can still keep going, but the performance is going to degrade. So one way to prevent that is by splitting the work across multiple machines. Another reason is that you want certain machines to be located in certain regions for latency purposes. An example of that is CDNs, which cache content in locations closer to users. So distributed consensus is all the machines agreeing on the same shared state. The question is, why do they need to share state? To answer that, let's take Kafka as an example. Kafka is an event streaming system. You can have client applications that send or write messages to Kafka. And these are called producers because they produce messages. And on the other side, you can have client applications that are reading these messages or consuming them, and we call them consumers. One of Kafka's main selling points is its high performance. The way it achieves that is by splitting each topic. You can think of a topic as a table or a place where you can send messages or events. Each topic is split into multiple partitions, and each partition is allocated to a different server. So Kafka consists of multiple servers, and for a topic where we can send messages or data to, it's split into partitions and each server leads or is responsible for a partition. So if you have 100 servers, you can split your topic into 100 partitions and it can be spread around 100 servers. So when you send the messages, the load is split uh, across all the servers. One thing Kafka brings to the table is decoupling producers from consumers. So what do we mean by that? Imagine e-commerce business. We have an orders topic, so we need to take in orders. These orders can come from multiple sources. So it can come from our backend, from some third party integration, from some other service. So we have multiple producers producing orders into the topic. On the other side, we have applications consuming this topic. So you can have a marketing app, you can have a fulfillment app, you can have a machine learning app that's training a recommender system. So all these applications interact with the same topic that has the orders. And we can have a large amount of orders. As long as we spread the topic into multiple partitions and we have enough brokers or servers that can hold these partitions, then we spread the load and it scales beautifully. So each server within the Kafka cluster holds a number of partitions. Now, what happens if a server fails? Ideally, these partitions would be moved somewhere else to another server and we resume processing as if nothing happened. What we need here is to be aware of which partitions live in which server. And this is the kind of state we need in these types of distributed systems. So we need to have this kind of metadata of where does a particular partition live. Even further, in Kafka, each partition has replicas. So a topic has partitions. Each partition has a broker that is responsible for it, but it is also replicated to other brokers. So when a broker fails, 
another broker that has a replica of a specific partition takes over. We have all the data already available as the data is being written or produced to the leader partition, to the main partition. It's also being replicated to the other machines. If the main machine fails, another one of the replicas takes over. All this data of where the partition lives, where the replicas live, this is what is needed to make sure that in case of failover or if a problem occurs, we can address it. So all the servers in the system need to agree on the same state. And that's why we need distributed consensus. So this is the actual example. We're using the Kafka topics command to query a Kafka cluster and ask it to provide the information that it has about the orders topic. So this particular topic has three partitions and for each partition, we have a different leader. That's the server or the broker responsible for that partition. It also has a replication factor of two. So each partition has two replicas. These are copies of the partition that are hosted on different servers that are ready to take over in case the main partition fails. By having the brokers agree on this shared state, the work can be divided intelligently and we can be fault tolerant. So we answered our two questions. It's not completely foolish to use multiple machines and it's not unreasonable to want these machines to share state. We have one last point before diving into Raft's internals and that's the lock. In our previous example, we looked at a simple topic with three partitions and each with two replicas. It was a rather small state. But imagine if we had 10,000 topics or 100,000 topics or even more and other types of objects that we need to keep track of. Do we need to share this state for each time it changes? No. What we can do is rely on a lock. So instead of sharing the whole state, we share events or steps that happened to the state. So in this example here, we commit entries. So for instance, we start by signing three to X, then one to Y and so on. And if we apply these events or these entries, we arrive to the same state. Same thing can happen for topics or database tables. We create a table, then we update that table, then we create another table, then we update that other table, then we remove the first table. So these are events. And if we, if we have these events in the same order and apply that sequence, we arrive to the same state. So we transform the problem of sharing a big, large state to sharing a log of events, a log of entries that once applied results in the same state. And that's what Raft does. It tries to arrive to the same log across the different machines. And once these machines apply this, the, the events described within that log, they arrive to the same state. So we're finally here. We're going to talk about Raft. But before we do that, one quick fun information is that Raft comes as a successor to another distributed consensus algorithm called Paxos. And the fun thing about Paxos is that it's extremely complicated. Uh, actually, the designers of Raft set out to create a consensus algorithm that's understandable. So understandability was one of their design goals. With Raft, we want to achieve distributed consensus. So basically, all the machines agree on the same value within their log. The way Raft does it is by having a leader. So within all the machines, we can see here that S5 is the one that's sending the messages, and that's the leader. So if we want to add an entry to the log, we simply send a request to the leader, and then the leader propagates that request to its followers, and once it receives a majority of confirmations from the followers, we call that a quorum, it commits the value to the log. So all the followers share the same value. And this could be, for instance, create a new topic or new database table. You send it to all the followers once you get the majority. So in this case, we have five nodes. The majority is three and the node and the leader always counts itself. So the moment the leader gets a response from two other nodes, it, can, it will be able to commit the message and only committed messages can be uh, sent to clients. So if a message is only received by one uh, or the, the leader has not received confirmation from a majority, it won't be able to commit the message and acknowledge the client's request. So what happens if this leader goes down? Well, we can do that. We can stop the leader and see what happens. So we see this uh, circle that's diminishing for each node and it's slightly different for each of the nodes. So I think this the 
S3 is going to be the one that times out first. So when it times out, it's going to start a new term. So we see here that we were in term two, now we're in term three. And what S3 does is that it votes for itself and sends requests to all the other nodes in the cluster and asks for their vote. If it's able to get a majority, a quorum, it will become the new leader and it will be the one receiving requests. So if we send the request to S3, we will see that the request has been added, but we will wait for a majority for it to be confirmed. And once we get a quorum, the request will be committed. Let's talk about an edge case. We notice that only after the timer times out that a node is able to start a new term and become a candidate basically and ask for votes. What if two nodes time out at the same time, basically creating some sort of split vote? Raft solves this by having randomized timeouts. So this is one of the features of Raft. By having this randomized timeout, we'll be sure that at some point one of the nodes will be candidate first and become leader first. Let's see what happens if we no longer have a quorum. So I'm going to kill this node and I want to kill, I mean with three, we, we should have a quorum. So I'm going to send a request here. This should be committed. So a new three request and it got the vote. So this new request was committed. However, if I kill new node, we won't have a majority anymore. And if I send a new request, it won't be committed. So you see the dotted lines here. It means the request has been appended to the log, but it won't be committed because we don't have a majority. If we start a new node, so let's start the old leader and we can see it's behind. So the S5 has the stage from the beginning. It, it did not get these two entries. So when, it's, when it starts, it's gonna send a request. It's gonna find out that uh, S3 is the leader. It's gonna uh, fetch the entries it's missing and it's going to acknowledge the new message and then s3 will be able to commit this dotted message so let's do that okay things are happening we got an entry then another one we're replicating what we're missing then the dotted one now i think we're ready for committing so the leader committed and the other two committed. Now, one quick uh, precision is that Kafka uses a modified version of Raft called KRAFT. Instead of the leader pushing updates, the consume the followers pull for these updates. So it's a pull model instead of a push model. But the principle and the key ideas remain the same. Kubernetes does not implement Raft directly, but rather relies on its CD, which is a distributed reliable key value store that's consistent thanks to the Raft protocol. Anyway, I hope this has been informative. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bye-bye.